Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. A little bit of a scenery change today. I'm actually in the guitar room at the studio I do some work at. It's a pretty cool place. Got a, quite a few Gibsons for any of you aficionados out there. But today, ironically, we will be talking about drums. I thought, hey, I've been doing some projects here and there. I've got a pretty full plate right now. I'm doing a lot of mixes on my own, trying to put out these videos, and I still have session work in between all that that I need to go do and attend to. So I thought, let's do a video on drums, a basic tips video on things that I think are important to getting the best out of your drum performances in the studio. Step one, setting up the drum kit. You think, oh, I just throw the drums up, slap some tuning on it, boom, 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 it's done. Yes and no. Ultimately, you need to make sure your drummer's comfortable. Does everything feel right? Feel is something I think is really important to drumming. And it's not just performance, but it's also how the drums react to your playing. I think as engineers and producers that might not play drums, you might not realize, you know, the intricacies of the instrument. Someone like me, I've been jamming on drums ever since I was in a band. Not that I was the drummer, but I just liked the drums and he left his kit at my house. So I'm gonna play your drums. And I got to practice a lot of things, things that I think are helpful in the studio, like tuning drums. I mean, I would just spend hours just doom, 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 doom. Just trying to figure out how does tuning work? How does the balancing work? You know, every lug. I think the more you can learn about tuning definitely is beneficial because it'll answer some of those problems that people get when they're recording drums of, you know, why is the tom going boom or boom, any of that weird stuff. It's usually tuning. Sometimes it's weird stuff too that you just won't know until you kind of mess around a bit. But you know, there could be things where the resonation of this tuning messes with the tuning over here and it creates this kind of wobble. So tuning and setup and feel. Those are three things that right off the bat don't really have anything to do with putting up a microphone, but they ultimately lead to a better performance. So that's just step one. Is your drummer comfortable? Is the feel of the drums right? Is everything responding the way they're used to? Are they able to give you the best performance that they know they can give you? Because that's what you want. You want them to be comfortable and give you the best that they can. So it all starts with the beginning. Now, another thing, getting weird on drum mics. I see a lot of people wanting big room sounds. I think that's another thing we're always trying to figure out. You know, what can we do to get a big room sound when we don't have a big room? Well, it's a little bit easier than you think. Acoustics are kind of tricky. They're funny like that in a way where you could literally put two 57s in the corners of a room and just throw them in the corners, literally in the ground, point them at the wall, do whatever you want. Just doing that, smashing it with some compression, like I'm talking poof, 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 super compression. You could really get this kind of cool, trashier room sound, but ultimately you've got to know when you're going to need some reverb or even a sample. And hey, that's okay. What do you think they did in the 70s and the 80s and pretty much up until now? They had devices that could trigger things that you wouldn't think of that would basically set off, you know, reverb or one shot samples and all kinds of stuff. The things that we have today come from the tricks of yesterday. So reverb, roominess, experiment, throw some mics in some weird places, maybe throw one up high. I mean, hey, something I've done once is open the door if you can to where your drums are and maybe put a mic down the hall and use that. I mean, there's some really creative ways you can get that kind of room sound you'll want, but ultimately you have to know what you're working with and what you want to achieve in the end, because sometimes it might take a little bit more than just putting in some mics in the room. This next tip is more of a tip for drummers, but basically stop destroying cymbals. Pretty much every engineer will be happy if you do not just destroy hitting the cymbals as hard as you can. I promise you, they don't owe you money. The cymbals will stay there, they'll love you. Heck, you'll spend less money if you don't destroy cymbals. And I'm talking just ram it, you know, just bah, bah, bah. You know, ultimately, you kind of want to bounce off a cymbal. You know, you want to have, you know, I talk about the feel thing, the reacting, you know, and that comes also from the angle of the cymbals. You don't want to be too crazy because sometimes you start to kind of hear the tip of the stick too much and you don't really get much of the cymbal. And 
you know, that's something you just don't really think about. You're like, oh, I just put the symbols up, I hit them, right? Well, the way you're hitting them and where you're hitting them, if you hit the edge, that's a different sound. If you hit it more like this, that's more of a different sound. There's a lot of these different things. Any little movement, basically, could kind of change how that symbol's gonna react. It could make a bad symbol sound good. It could make a good symbol sound bad. So symbol positioning, it's another important thing that it's just something we don't think about. So you're probably sitting down watching this video. Well, if you're a drummer, you're sitting in a throne pretty much all day. And something that I don't think is talked about enough is ergonomics. And I know I've been talking it up with all the feel of the drum heads and everything, but your drum throne's important too. How low are you to the ground? Because if your knees are like all the way up here, I guarantee you're probably gonna have a pretty bad back by the end of the night. And some people work through it. I'm sure that's fine, but I just don't know how much longevity there is if you're putting yourself in an awkward position all day. So there is something to be said about setting your chair at a more proper height, you know, trying to get your back at a really nice position because it's a bit more of a strenuous thing to play drums. You know, you kind of have to do a bit of move in there. So, you know, trying to prep yourself for a long recording day, it's going to help in the long run. I mean, some sessions could be 10 hours. I mean, who knows? It's really up to the drummers a lot of the times. So making sure you're comfortable and, and ready to go the long run, it's always going to help you in the end. One of the most important things that I don't think we think about is monitoring. How's the drummer hearing their self? I've been to studios where basically they don't have a headphone set up. You want to hear the click track louder? Well, the control room's going to hear the click track louder. And to be honest, as the guy in the studio, that sucks. Like, I don't want to go to a studio where I have to blare the click track in my ears as long, you know, with the drummer because you know, he's needs it that loud. I don't need it that loud. I need to hear the drums. So having a good headphone setup is essential. I know for me, I use the hearback systems a lot. They're really cool, customizable. You can really fine tune a monitoring setup with that. But even if you don't have that, if you can figure out some sort of way to send something out, preferably in stereo and spend some time, maybe put on the headphones yourself if you can and listen to what they're going to hear. I think some people just kind of throw the drummer headphones throw the singer headphones and they're just like yeah it just there you go listen to this and and you don't realize that like maybe it doesn't it's not cutting through right for them or maybe they're getting too much of something and they just don't speak up because sometimes people won't speak up and they'll just deal with it because they're trying to be cool but being cool is going to either blow out your ears or it's going to have you struggling in the performance because you're just not hearing what you need to sometimes the click's not loud enough sometimes it's too loud actually and you just need more music communicate with who you're recording with and as an engineer or a producer make sure your artists can hear what they're doing make sure they have a way to properly hear what they're doing and talk to them just let them know you know be aware of what they have going on for them too so i know you probably want to know some secrets about miking things and this and that and i'll tell you it's there's not much magic to it it's really just setting a mic on a drum until it sounds right i hate to say but if you do want to know more about that kind of stuff leave a comment below let me know the kinds of things you're trying to figure out stuff that's puzzling you stuff that just doesn't seem to quite have an answer because i think in these days it's more so about finding the right question to ask rather than finding the right answer sometimes we just don't know what we're trying to ask and once we figure it out it leads us down a whole rabbit hole of a different way of thinking a way that can help you get better mixes, performances, recordings. And that's ultimately what we're trying to do here on the Producer Josh channel is help people through ways that they just didn't realize. The stuff that to me is important that people just don't talk about. So if you enjoy this kind of stuff, go ahead and hit like. And if you really like this stuff, hit the subscribe button. I make videos every week. I try to fit it in with my schedule and haven't broken it yet. So until next week, peace out.